Yo, what's up? If there's one thing that players of shooter games want to have, it is good aim. Preferably extremely good aim, so you can outplay all of your enemies. This guide will show you step by step how to significantly improve your aim in a short amount of time. So, let's go. Top players in any FPS game reach their levels after having mastered the three core skills of aiming. First, precision. Second, positioning. And third, speed. There are millions of players around the world playing different FPS games for 5, 15 or 20 years and they wonder why are they perpetually stuck on a low skill level when it comes to aiming. The reason that keeps these players from advancing in skill is that they either don't understand they need to have all three skill sets or they don't take all three aspects serious enough and overcommit to only one of them. The by far most common noob mistake here is overrating speed and not taking the other two points serious enough. But this is exactly the opposite of how you can train your brain to get better at aiming. Because experience shows you cannot learn speed and precision at the same time. You need to learn one thing first. Trying to learn speed first means you will get good reflexes, but you will miss most of your shots. And if you try to learn precision then, it will be extremely hard and you will to have unlearned speed first because you because the faster you already are, the harder it becomes to be precise. So the only way to acquire world class aim is to practice position first. After that, you want to practice positioning because positioning helps you with aim and it gives you more time. And having more time on your enemies means you need to be less fast. So you get a virtual speed advantage. Because your enemies have less time to react, you have more time to react. And then speed becomes much easier to put on top of that. Because now you don't have any distortions of tactical nature during the battle. So this natural progression, precision, positioning and speed is what we will practice now step by step. Starting with precision, we need to overcome the first big noob mistake and it's players shooting at enemies, not knowing exactly where to shoot on the body of the enemy. And then even if they land their shots, they still don't see the expected results. Because oftentimes the enemies shoot back and you die, or you miss too many bullets strangely, or other things. And then people think, oh, it's either cheating or bad servers or whatever. Though you can avoid all of these problems by understanding the following metrics. First of all, before you start shooting at enemies, as in real life, you need to have a plan regarding how much and how fast you need to deal damage. Because you can either go for headshots or for body shots. This is the first decision you want to make. And headshots are obviously harder to do. And if you aim and miss, you give the enemy chance to shoot back. So it's always a risk involved. Going for body shots are obviously much easier to hit. But if your body shot doesn't kill the enemy, he can also shoot you back. So at any moment during a game, you want to have an instant understanding where to aim at. This saves you a lot of valuable time and makes sure you have an advantage on your enemies who are usually derping around not knowing what to do. Most of these examples I will show you now have low BI equipment because this shows you how strong these principles and methods are because they work with everything and of course if you use high BI equipment it works even better. Now looking at a soldier he's got a standard bolt action rifle and a standard low BI SMG. Here's how you analyze what to do. Learn this inside out so you don't so you never have to think about it anymore during a battle and you will be much more deadly because your shots will actually be effective. And after that, we're going to look at how to land these shots better and then how to position yourself better and then how to be fast at it. But this is the absolute core. Without understanding what I say now, you can't become good at aiming because this is what every high quality aimer knows and what most of them won't tell you, of course. You want to calculate the damage in order to kill someone. Usually it goes like this. In order to kill a normal soldier and enlisted, you need to deal 10 damage. If he's got vitality, 13 and a half. If you're playing low BR, dealing 10 damage is enough most times. If you're playing mid BR or higher, most enemies will have vitality, so you want to always go for 13 and a half damage. 
The two, di the two relevant distances enlisted are short distance for maximum 10 meters and mid distance, meaning 11 to 100 meters. And you see the damage drops off hard, not for, not for bolt actions necessarily, but especially for SMGs where the damage is almost halved. And if you're using this weapon, you see that no matter the distance, basically, you will always one-shot your enemy. So using this bolt action rifle, you don't need to go for headshots, because headshots obviously have the disadvantage of being hard to land. And the, the longer you have to aim, the, the higher the chance of missing, the higher the chance of your enemy shooting back, because you have to reload. So with a weapon like this, you always go for body shots. We could go into yellow perks that increase the chance of surviving hits, but we don't need to go into this because otherwise you will have to, to, have to remember too many special cases and exceptions. Usually just go for the basic math of 10 and 13 and a half damage and everything's fine. So both actions are very simple, always go for body shots. What about the actual hard case, meaning full auto weapons with insufficient damage? This is where you really need to understand all of this inside out. This weapon on short distance doesn't deal 10 damage. You will never kill an enemy with this weapon hitting him. Unless you land a headshot. Head and neck shots deal 2 to 2.5 times the normal damage. So this would instantly deal over 16 damage, meaning the enemy is dead. Alright, the first case. If you're fighting against mid-range damage, uh, mid-range enemies, we only deal 5.5 damage. With a headshot, we can increase this to 11 damage, so normal enemies would die. Well, a pure headshot deals 2.5, meaning even vitality enemies will die. So, this is also good. We want to go for head and neck shots. This should be enough. And here's how you actually do your thinking. The factors, whether, the factors for deciding where you aim at are... A, how many enemies do you see and how, any, how many enemies can shoot back? Because if it's only one enemy, you can afford a, taking your time to aim. And you can afford, but well, also if you don't aim that well, just shooting at the body and letting two bullets hit, giving the enemy a little bit more time to shoot back. Because the best that can happen is for him to hit, shoot you back once, but, but you should survive it most of the time. So you have some time. If it's two or more enemies, you don't have any time, because every single additional second they are alive, they can shoot back. So against groups of enemies, you need to react lightning fast and to have maximum effect. And this makes the situation easier for you, because if you know there are too many enemies, you need to go for headshots. And this is the big mistake people do. Most people always aim the same way, but how you aim actually depends on how the situation is whether you can take risks or not, and whether you have to take risks. So if you're fighting against a group of enemies, with this weapon you always have to go for head and neck shots, because this weapon is, and this is the second metric, is very slow. The slower a weapon, the less likely you're gonna land enough hits. And especially against groups of enemies, you don't have any time to wait to land two hits with this slow weapon. So you always have to go for headshots, not only due to damage and distance, but also due to fire rate. If a weapon has bad recoil or bad dispersion, it also means you want to go for headshots, because then once again the chance for landing your landing multiple hits on the body gets slower. Some people think, oh, what if the if the dispersion is high or the distance is high or the recoil is high, it gets hard to hit headshots. That's true, but you only need one headshot to kill anyway. But you need to land multiple body shots to kill. And the, having being forced to have to land multiple hits on the body means that you will have to spray 5 to 10 bullets. And you don't have time to spray 5 to 10 bullets against a group of enemies just to kill one soldier. So you see, with a weapon like this, you always go for headshots. This is the simple understanding. And even looking at stronger weapons like this one, oh, much faster? Yeah. W worse recoil? Yeah. Damage is very similar. With this weapon, for example, you can afford, by the way, to go for body shots, because the weapon is so fast that if you can control it well enough, you will land literally two body hits in the same time, 
as this weapon with almost just half of the fire rate will land one hit. Applying this in a game we see one soldier coming with another one so we know alright there's going to be a whole squad coming. We don't have enough time, the distance is beyond 10 meters, we have to go for head and neck shots. And you see here I specifically aim at the neck and most enemies die with one shot. And they don't have any time to shoot back. And this is exactly how you decimate two whole squads with a beginner weapon that most people underestimate because you perfectly use this weapon. And this is the first level of understanding aim. You know where to aim. You keep a steady aim at the target. And whenever you have to reload, you obviously run away, you hide, get behind some cover. That's why I'm also very close to the wall, so I have as much cover as possible. And I can always reload and I always try to go for headshots and the enemies drop down because they don't have time to shoot back. Now you are ready to actually improve your position. And the by far best way to do this is to go for as clean as possible and as slow as necessary shots. As already explained in the intro, your brain cannot practice speed and precision at the same time. The optimal way is to practice precision first and then go for speed. And for that, of course, bolt actions are amazing. Here I have one of the slowest one in the game. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't be fast. I have to be slow. And this gives you more than enough time to perfectly aim every shot. And then it becomes easy. And doesn't matter, even if you speed a little bit up, if you miss a shot, if you miss a shot, slow down again. And do this for around five games. Thinking about every single shot, trying to land it, is the best, not only meditation, but also aim practice you can get. After five, possibly five more, so ten games, you will feel instantly how you're used to, because your brain becomes accustomed to aiming well, and then you don't have to think that much about aiming, you don't have to focus so much on it, because your subconsciousness is going to do the aiming for you. And after that you can start speeding up, and for that we're going to have other practices later. Next we have positioning. Moving around the map intelligently and placing yourself in good spots gives you two very strong advantages. First, you avoid very painful mistakes like running around open areas and getting blown up by bombs, grenades and stuff like that. And also you avoid getting ambushed by enemies. And the second advantage is you are getting yourself RPG-like buffs on your aiming and you're giving your enemies debuffs on their aiming. Because if you have a good position like here, peeking around the corner and instantly going back and then shooting again, it gives me not only some really good cover, but it also lets me be very fast because I don't need to aim. I literally just have to hold my gun parallel to the wall. And that's very easy. I don't need to aim on any specific height because I know bolt action rifle one shots. But the enemies, they have to aim fast because they don't know what I'm going to pick out. And if you're doing this quickly, and it's very easy to do it quickly since you don't have to aim, you always get the first shot. And if enemies are being not smart and run in a line instead of next to each other, they even can't shoot me because they have their own team members in front of themselves. So this very simple way of positioning yourself already gives you such an advantage that you can easily outplay groups of enemies just with a basic bolt action rifle. Of course, there are even better ways and more sophisticated ways to use positioning to your advantage. The absolutely strongest way to position yourself is by holding a corner. You do that by going into a semi-hidden position and then aim slightly right or left to a wall and just wait for enemies. Preferably you expect enemies to be already coming and then all you do is you try to move as little as possible and then just click at enemies. This gives you the fastest reaction time possible because you don't have to do anything, all you need to do is just click. But the enemies, they have to do all the work if they want to hit you. They need to aim at you, they need to aim at the right height, they need to shoot at your head instead of the sandbag and they need to land their shots and obviously all of this takes time. So this is the best way to have a strong especially defensive advantage. You can theoretically also do it on the attack by just moving closer and closer towards the enemies 
but on defense is obviously even better and easier to do. And there's no way to outplay this, except for being flanked, or by the enemies running extremely fast by stacking running perks, or by throwing small grenades, or by pre-aiming, which is what we're going to do now. Being world-class in aiming doesn't just mean you're faster and more precise than your enemies, it especially means that you will defeat them even if they are faster and more precise than you. And you do this by being tactically smarter than them. And the most important mechanic for that is pre-aiming. Pre-aiming means instead of turning around a corner and searching for enemies, aiming, shooting and possibly thinking in between all steps, you just skip all these steps and you think about where you will shoot before you turn around the corner. This way you, self, you save yourself a lot of time and you especially can outperform enemies who are, for example, holding an angle on you. So here's what you do. You go into the battle and you see, all right, there are enemies on the right side with some cover. Now there are two dimensional axes here, the up, up, down and the left, right axis. The less you move your mouse, the better your aim will be. Because every mouse movement, most of the time it's handshaking, means that you will have to readjust later. So what you want to do is you will see, all right, this is where I will have my weapon set on the center of the body of the enemy. Which is good enough for us. And then I go back and I minimally move my mouse so I know that if I return to the angle, looking at the enemy, my mouse will be almost perfectly placed on him. So it will be almost on the same height and I just need to readjust to the left and right a little bit. And since I know or since I expect my mouse to be perfectly placed or my cursor to be perfectly placed, I can instantly start spraying without thinking. This saves you very precious milliseconds and this is the only way to outperform enemies who are insanely fast or who are already smart and know that you're coming and that also hold an angle on you and instantly start shooting you. So here's what we do. I instantly turn around and start spraying. And we know, wow, I got shot back a little bit. I got hit and I sprayed my whole magazine, but I got the kill and I didn't die myself. And this is exactly the advantage of pre-aiming. If we had to approach a situation in a normal way, with a normal speed without pre-aiming, we would be dead and the enemy <laughs> would be alive. But using pre-aiming, we managed to survive. Now let's do this again. We reload and we peek out and you see I start spraying in the same area because we can't expect enemies there, but there wasn't anyone there. Is this bad? No. Since you can only pre-aim with full auto weapons basically, or at least this type of pre-aiming, you, you have enough bullets in your magazine and you can spend them and you don't need to hit bullets. Pre-aiming isn't about efficiency, it's only about efficacy. You're extremely inefficient in terms of bullets because you're spraying them all away, but you're extremely effective because instead of dying, you still manage to get out on top on a position that's almost unwinnable. So pre-aiming saves our day again because you see once again, we just don't think, we instantly start spraying. And here you see I even, after seeing the enemy, after spotting this enemy and having to reload, I start shooting right at the building because I know if I wait for him to appear, he can instantly shoot me. But if I start spraying even against the little wooden house on the left, if he comes out, he will run into my bullet spray or if I move slightly to the right, my bullet spray will automatically go into him. So this is the magic of pre-aiming and here, <laughs> if I knew there's an enemy coming, I would also have pre-aimed, but I didn't know and I didn't have any bullets. But yeah, that's what we have fast aiming for. And also the last enemy that emerged here on the left side, you see, when my aim snapped to the enemy, it didn't land perfectly on him. It landed too much up and too much to the left. Yep. And here's where I started shooting, but still, if you see in hectic situations like that, especially if you're in the zone and already are really well focused from all of the pre-aiming, just start, and this is a general skill, 
or knowledge, just spray away your bullets. Don't try to preserve bullets, always spray away the bullets. It doesn't matter if you have 100 bullets left if you're dead. All that matters is how many kills did you get for your one soldier that you're using. And spraying away bullets is just going to improve your performance significantly instead of trying to be precise. Precision is for bolt action rifles, for slow firing weapons, because if you don't have precision there, you don't have any kills. But full auto weapons, it's all about trying to be fast because you can afford missing your shots. Now let's use everything we learned so far in a very common situation, a tunnel fight. Tunnel fight is basically a long corridor where two opposite squads or single soldiers are shooting at each other and you want to come out on top of it. Now how do you do it? Here we see the enemies know we are here and they are spraying full auto weapons. And this means, alright, we have to absolutely land the first hit. And we also see in the kill feed that we killed enemies successfully by headshots. Good. This also means that, yeah, if the enemies are so fast, we need to go for headshots if possible. And we need to absolutely perfectly pre-aim because we don't have time to react. So this is, pure, uh, this is where you need maximum speed and maximum precision. And this is only manageable by having full auto weapons. Of course, if we had a bolt action rifle, we just peek, do one shot and instantly peek back. But, since we know there are groups of enemies there, it's very beneficial to spray in. Because even if we die, if we manage to get 2, 3 or 4 kills, this is already great. So, let's see, alright, there are already bullets flying. We need to have our cursor on the expected height of the enemy heads. This is what we do now. And then we go to the side and instantly start spraying. And we see, alright... One kill, not much, but still, keep in mind, neck shots don't give you headshot icons, but they still do the, the double damage. So, many of these hits are head, basically headshots, but not counted as, or not denominated as headshots by the game. And same thing again, and oh, much better, we got two kills this time, once again. And you see, my first shots were too high. Because I know, or so I saw, right, I sometimes shot their, their body, so I tried to aim a bit higher. And then I had to aim, let's take a look at it again. You see, I start, uh, just the other one. And now I start to aim high, and you see, that was way too high. So I go instantly down, and after adjusting a little bit down, I instantly get two headshots and one normal kill. And you see, perfect pre-aiming, even if it's a little bit off, works wonderful. Now this dude <laughs> didn't pre-aim because he was shooting first at us, but but he still missed. <laughs> it, it should never happen that you are getting the first shot, but you're missing. So yeah. Now let's pick up another weapon and see how the Germans like their own FG. Oh, apparently a lot because he survived. So you see, these super hectic types of battles where where you really have to completely outplay your enemy because the position is literally the same. You're even, you're even behind him because he's got a whole squad. You have only one soldier, but combining all of these skills and executing them perfectly means, or you have two soldiers, means you, you trade very favorably. I think we traded something like 2 versus 10, which is just insane, especially since the enemies had a highly favorable position. Another aspect of positioning is optimizing the way you move around the map. Once you internalize this subconsciously, you don't have to think ever again about it, because you will automatically move the perfect way. Same as real soldiers who, once they learned it, don't have to think about it. And the ones who don't, well, they usually get shot. So, you want to take this serious, it's absolutely important. Here, we are standing in an open area. Open area is bad because enemies are spawning on the left, we are spawning on the right. So I can expect one quarter of the map to be shooting at me, possibly even the ones to the left behind me. Since I can safely assume no one's shooting from the right, and I look at the left and see no one there, I know all the enemies I need to care about are the ones in front of me, and if I would go straight to the front, I would... this, this would be the closest distance, I would be the fastest there, but this keeps me in the open the whole time. Also, I walk from an open area, once again through a door, into quite the open area where every enemy can instantly shoot me. So this is bad. I need cover as fast as possible. And once I start, if I want to engage the enemies, I want cover starting the gunfight. So that's why I go to the right, where we have this metal pole giving me some cover. 
very good. And then I have this little wall. And this is some perfect cover to hold angles and start pre-aiming into the enemies. So let's go here. We see some enemies. All right, too many. I saw more. I need to make sure no one's shooting me from the right, so we killed him. And now we're gonna hug the wall, which is something you always want to do. Stay as close to a wall as possible, because no one can shoot you through walls, at least not with guns. And then, since we see bullets, wonderful, I know I need to... You see, I made a mistake. I was reloading with my body in the open. It was very stupid. You always need to avoid it. I didn't hug the wall. But now I can start pre-aiming into the enemies. And you see, I pre aim perfectly because I even shot the wall once. And since we're using the trusty grease gun, everyone gets his head or neck shot. For those wondering why am I using grease guns the whole time, very simple. Grease guns are called one of the worst games, uh, one of the worst weapons in the game. Almost no one uses them. Guess what? <laughs> if all of this works with gre grease guns, if you can do this with grease guns, if you start using real weapons, you're going to be completely undefeatable. So, yeah, grease guns are the great test for whether your tactics are high quality or not. Now, let's try this on the attack while clearing out a whole objective and trying to capture it. First, we start in a hidden position. Hidden position means you always have the first shot advantage. Unless the enemies know exactly where you are, most of the time they won't, you always get the first kill. Make sure you just don't get one, but be smart and precise because you don't. You have all the time in the world. Aim well so you always get as many kills as possible. But never forget, once you start shooting, everyone can see bullets spraying out of this window. So enemies will know where you are. So we're gonna use this and you see instantly a bunch of enemies dead. These are the kills we absolutely have to get simply due to having such a good position. If you fail at this, you might work on your aim and your precision because this is exactly what you practice precision for. And now, we kill once we kill everyone who we can see, we're gonna quickly rush out and we already know all right enemies to the left because we see the bullets. We clean them out too while hugging the wall. We don't give up our defensive position yet. And now we quickly run towards the enemies. I could use an X here, but since there are enemies inside, it would be too risky to, to not have a weapon in my arms. And here instantly we see some enemies. We are in the open, but we still can use the window as some cover. And once again, weapon damage. Since we have a low damage weapon, we need to go for headshots. For neck and headshots. We already got one headshot, couple of neck shots. This one got headshot. And this one also got headshot. So you see, if, if you... Well... <laughs> If I didn't go for headshots, these dudes would have killed me, like, likely. And this is something that many uh, people who complain about AI being too bad don't get. The AI is dangerous if you play badly. If you, let the, if you give the AI too much time, they will become instantly, instantly deadly to you. But if you're fast, the AI always has a delay in enlisted. If it didn't have a delay hard-coded, Players would whine because the AI instantly kills them. So the trick with killing bots is to be fast. If you don't give them time, if you spray them away quickly, then you're going to likely kill a whole squad. But if you give them time, the bots are likely going to kill you. Also, keep in mind that there's always one real player controlling a soldier on a, on a whole squad, and the rest is controlled by bots. The real player usually is more dangerous because he's going to be better and faster on average. What you want to do is, if you want to clear a whole squad, you want to kill the real player. It's likely the, the bot or the, 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 the soldier on the battlefield that reacts the fastest to you. Because, once again, the bots are slow. And if you see him, if you see the first bot turning towards you, instantly kill him. And if you see too many just start sh shooting the one you can kill the first. And what happens then is, it takes roughly one second, if you're slow even longer, to switch from your dead soldier to your new bot. And if you're faster than this delay, you can just spray away the bots. And what also can happen is that you're going to kill the bot that the player wants to get into, and then he's delayed again. And this is how you can completely wipe a whole squad without the enemy being able to shoot back. So, to sum up, you always want to position yourself in a way that you have an advantage, and your enemies can't get an advantage. So always hug the walls, always pre-aim, always look for indicators where enemies are, 
and map knowledge and knowing where enemies likely will be also helps a lot for that. And then just play disciplined. So don't run in the open, just like that. Always use the optimal paths and play tight. And practice this, even if you're playing against weak enemies. This is even easier because then you don't have to think at all. Practice using perfect movement in every single situation and then it becomes second nature to you and you will do it automatically and you're going to become a perfect player on multiple levels. Alright, finally it's time to work on our speed. How do we do that? I already warned you about the big mistakes and noob traps that people fall into that prevent them from becoming faster, although they try it. Now, here's what you want to do. The general way to become very fast is to do just what I already told you, be more precise and work on your positioning. If you do this, if you become really good and reliable, you can speed it up a bit. A bit means so you feel it challenging, so it's not easy, so you always feel, oh, this is out of my comfort zone, but not too fast, so it's not too hard. You want to be exactly so fast that you feel you're faster than usual and that it's harder than usual, but that you still succeed. And doing this and constantly repeating it will make you faster over time. And then it's just a question of focus. Because not being focused or having dispersion as you saw here, the shot was perfectly on him, but the shot still missed. Sometimes you miss shots because enlisted weapons have dispersion and just give a random missed shot result to you. But this doesn't matter. If you practice well enough, often enough and focused enough, Focused means constantly try to get better. This is the only thing you want to focus on when playing the game, to always get better. Obviously, if you want to play for fun, play for fun. But if you want to become extremely good at aiming, play for getting better. This is what I've been doing for one year, and now I'm one of the fastest people in the world. Why? Because I played for one year only with the focus on getting faster, more precise, and working on good positioning. So, this is the first thing. And now I'm going to give you some high tier secrets how you can get even faster than that. Speed trick number one, understand that in order to be extremely fast and also extremely precise, you constantly have to be focused. And this drains your focus quickly. So what you want to do is, you want to, as often as possible, use weapons that don't drain your focus, like a grenade launcher, as I did the whole time, and then, only if it's absolutely necessary, start to use the weapons that are draining your focus like bolt action rifles. This is the same principle as world-class attackers do in football. They usually try to move as little as possible. So if they get, if they see a good opportunity, they spend all of their saved up energy and go full super speed mode that normal players can't keep up. Because despite being professional football players too, they are constantly running. And if you're constantly running, you can't compete with the focus and intensity of someone who was relaxing. Same focus, same principle here. We are starting with grenade launchers. And another advantage of grenade launchers is that since you don't have to aim, you can constantly look around 360 degrees and you can memorize where everyone is standing, which is something you also want to practice. And then you can start making decisions, all right, who can shoot at me? Who do I need to avoid? Where do I need to run? Who do I need to hide from? And who do I need to shoot the first? And after relaxing in a way like this, you're going to have more than enough focus to start bolt actioning everyone away that you see. And very likely, since most enemies don't, use this psychological economical system of, of saving up focus, you also have a nice advantage regarding speed over them. A similar principle applies when you're hip firing. In general, hip firing is the least stressful, easiest way to shoot because it requires the least focus. Normal shooting by zooming into your weapon is more complicated, requires more focus and using scopes on sniper rifles usually is the most mentally taxing way to shoot because the constant, especially on bolt action rifles, zooming in or scoping in and scoping out, your brain constantly has to readjust. You also have, might have to readjust your aim with your mouse, which is even worse because then you have to constantly do micro movements that all need to be perfect and if your targets are too close it becomes extremely hard. So hip fire is the easiest way and as you can see here regarding hip fire all you need to do is have preferably a full auto weapon 
So you don't need to readjust after every shot like a semi-auto bolt action would do. And then you just hold your weapon on head height. And as you can see, most of my hits are headshots. Or uh, half of my hits were headshots. Because all I did was just holding my weapon into the neck area of the enemy. And then sometimes I get a headshot, sometimes I get a neck shot. And it works perfectly fine. Also, it's quite good to... It's a quite good method to find out weapons which are actually good for hip firing or not. M2 carbine, good for hip firing. Some other weapons get ridiculous precision penalties, especially semi auto rifles. So, with them, you don't necessarily want to hip fire on distance too far away. So, if you hip fire, always do it on very short range because otherwise the dispersion is gonna take away all of your kills. Now it's time to apply everything we learned in a high difficulty setting. First we throw a grenade, which debuffs our enemies because now they're distracted and we might get some lucky kills. Then we use the scope to check the area and we know right side is clean. Now before we rush in we want to know how is the situation. Situation is we are spawning on the left, no one was there so it's safe. Right side outside is safe. The only places where enemies can be is behind those windows in the back side or right side where the enemies are coming from through the tunnel or straight right where there's a little wooden area. Now the perfect play for me would be to hug the wall on the right side so I get perfect protection and can start shooting at enemies from a good angle. This is what I didn't do though, instead I rushed in like an idiot and <laughs> had exposed myself. But I didn't get shot. Why? Very simple. There's one important trick here. When you move around and your enemies are all short range in front of you, you can afford moving a lot. Because moving a lot means you're gonna get a dispersion penalty on your bullets, so they're gonna fly with less accuracy. Even despite perfect aiming, you will miss some shots. But if you're moving around non-stop, most enemies will have a very hard time hitting you. And this leads to the fact that this dude right side <laughs> did shoot me. So yeah, if he were an easier target, he might have shot us. Of course, we won't zoom in since he's very easily shot. So we just hip fire. And this time we can even shoot for the wood. And the situation is clear. Very simple so far. Now we're dying. Now we're dying again. And here comes the important part. We are spawning as a bot. Problem is, our bots, as usual, are quite useless. They look literally looking at the wrong, the opposite direction where they should be looking. Now, the next aiming secret or speed secret. You want to practice 90 degree moves, very fast 90 degree moves. As you can see here, I'm going to quickly move 180 degrees, but I'm going to do a little stop at 90 degrees. You saw that? I was looking at the other side, outside of the window, and then I move, stop and move again. This is something you need to practice until it becomes perfectly fast and fluid. How do you practice this? Very simple. Make sure you always have enough space on your mouse so you can move around. And you don't need more space. All you need is exactly enough space to do these movements. If you have exactly enough space and nothing more, you will automatically get the perfect 90 degree movements because you can't move any further. You see? Very simple. And in order to still get maximum precision, when you're aiming, only use your hand, not your arm. The more arm you use, the less precision you get. No surgeon is working with his arms, only with his hands. You have more precision in your hands. If you want even more precision, only use your fingers, not even the rest of the hand. Though this is only necessary usually if you're doing tank duels, where you literally have to pixel snipe. But in normal, especially fast battles, using just your hand is perfectly enough. And you want to go into practice mode and just for 5 minutes straight practice these 90 degrees jumps and then you will have it internalized. You won't ever need to practice it again. So let's take a look. We are dying and then we are spawning and 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Also a useful trick I can recommend. internalize it in your brain that you always do 90 degree stops. So I wanted automatically to move 180 degrees, but I, my brain automatically stopped at 90 degrees. Now this can be very useful because this enables you to do some really hard shots because you, 
if you always if you if you practice for example 90 degrees and 180 degrees then you well then you have twice the work but if you only practice 90 degrees you can just quickly do two times 90 degrees and then you get the perfect 180 degrees and you still have the precision to possibly shoot in your 90 degree turn and now a very calm situation we are surrounded by many enemies who are we going to shoot two different two possible methods a you just shoot the first one you see and try to kill him and then you go to the next and the next now this is obviously too slow for me i want to kill everyone how do you do that very simple you you memorize where everyone is and this is why you're constantly turning around you always want to see you, you want to take all the information in and always have a mental image of the room you're fighting in and then i know all right one enemy in front of me uh, behind the left window and then behind the right window there's someone possibly also in the center window likely though i don't know and then there's right side a bunch of dudes now if i go to the right I start shooting from right to left. You could also shoot from left to right. It depends how you're positioned. It also depends what's easier for you. For some people, it's easier to shoot from right to left. For others, from left to right. For me personally, it's easier to shoot from right to left because it's much more natural if I move my mouse from right to left. So this is what I try to do most of the time. And even if it would theoretically be better to shoot the other way, I'm just much faster this way. What I'm doing is I shoot two bullets to this one, two bullets to the other one and spray the rest into the enemy. And if you look at the kills we got, let's take a look, we have one kill and we get, well, we got six kills with this method. I barely aimed. All I did was automatically having my aim at around neck level and I memorized where everyone is standing and then I just sprayed. And this is how you want to fight. You want to think as little as possible. You want to automatically be in a position where everything is perfect for you because you practice perfect behavior. And then you just pray. And then you just a little bit move to the enemies, move your cursor to the enemies. And you will get insane amounts of kills. And most importantly, you will be so fast that your enemies won't kill you. We just defeated so many enemies without anyone really killing us. Oh, one dude who was hiding behind us. And we see now, from a tactical standpoint, we just lost two soldiers, uh, three soldiers actually, fighting in this building. It is statistically basically impossible, or not logical, to try it again. Because there's still more than, there are multiple enemies. Now, the mistake would be to rush in again and try the same thing again. We could do it because we're trading favorably, but you never want to go uphill, always downhill, always go for the path where you have the advantage not the enemies we are literally running in exposed into a completely perfect fortification that the enemies have with all of their tunnels and windows so we are going to avoid this and flank them of course we try to get some shots in as long as we're safe and now we are flanking we can only flank from the right obviously not from the left this would take us one minute to run around and we see can we kill someone here's something you might want to do try to shoot through things and enlist it. Because sometimes it works, other times not. In real life, we would be able to shoot through them, but obviously Darkfall was too lazy to code, <laughs> and they're not penetrable, apparently. And now, we can perfectly, thanks to our flank, start spraying away enemies. And some people would check the right side, though this is suboptimal, because you see enough targets in front of you. If you see enough targets in front of you, just start spraying. Try to kill them all, doesn't matter if you get shot from someone on the right, because if you instantly start shooting, you will still kill a whole group of enemies. And then it doesn't matter if you lose one soldier. And you see, this is how you master a situation like this, by just being lightning fast and being intelligent and trading extremely beneficial compared to your enemy team. Congratulations, now you're ready to become an absolutely deadly player. If you learned something, of course like, and if you're new, subscribe to get more cool and videos, and until soon, goodbye.